In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our celebration as we celebrate today the third Sunday in Ordinary Time, also the Word of God Sunday. A special welcome to our viewers at home who are joining us today. As we begin this celebration, let us pause now to place ourselves in God's hands, calling to mind God's great love for each one of us, and asking for forgiveness for any times that we have sinned. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, Christ, have Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah saying, get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you, so Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three-day walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. The people of Nineveh believed God, and they proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Show me your way, oh Lord. Show me your way, oh Lord. Make me to know your ways, O oh Lord. Teach me to walk on your path. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are God of my salvation. Show me your way, oh Lord. Show me your way, oh Lord. Be merciful if you're merciful. 
see For they have been from of old According to your steadfast love For the sake of your goodness, Lord Show me your way, oh Lord Show me your way, oh Lord Good and upright is the Lord And instructs sinners in the way A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as those who are not mourning, those who rejoice as those who were not rejoicing, those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as if they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As Jesus went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Every year on the third Sunday in Ordinary Time, for the last number of years, we celebrate the Sunday of the Word of God. And there's a beautiful uh, passage from the Second Vatican Council document called De Verbum, uh, which talks about the importance of Scripture and the Word of God. And the passage reads the following. The Church has always venerated the divine Scriptures, just as she venerates the body of the Lord. All the preaching of the Church should be nourished and governed by sacred Scripture. For in the sacred books, the Father, who is in heaven, meets his children with great love and speaks with them. And the power and goodness in the word of God is so great that it stands as the support and energy of the church, the strength of faith for her sons and daughters, the food of the soul, a pure and perennial fountain of spiritual life. From De Verbum number 21. We are encouraged in a special way and reminded during this uh, Sunday of the Word of God to make Scripture part of our daily lives, part of our daily prayer. 
We can simply go through scripture from one book to another, or there are some many guides out there available to us as well. Publications such as Bread of Life, The Word Among Us, Magnificat, or The Living with Christ Missalette, which has our daily scripture readings in that. And it's great for us to follow and pray along with that as well in sync, in sync with the church's year. We can do this as individuals, but we're also encouraged to pray together the scriptures as a family. And as we gather together, one of the suggestions is that we can, as a family, uh, pray over the scripture readings of the day, perhaps before or just after a meal, and reflect on three questions. How is God speaking to me in this reading? How is God speaking to us as a family? How did I experience this reading today? Reading scriptures is not like reading any other book. Scriptures is the living word of God. We're reminded in the letter to the Hebrews, chapter four, verse 12, the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. We should begin our time with scriptures by praying, asking the Holy Spirit to open our minds to hear whatever the Lord would like to say to us today. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening, was the prayer that Eli taught the prophet Samuel to say at a very young age, and a great prayer for us to begin our time with scriptures as well. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening, or simply or and simply, come Holy Spirit. There are a number of times in the scriptures that it talks after Jesus' resurrection that Jesus opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And on the road to Emmaus, the disciples proclaimed, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the road and opened the scriptures to us. So it's a great way to start again, to ask the Lord to open our minds to understand uh, the sacred scriptures. You may know that our Sunday readings for Mass are on a three-year cycle. In year A, the Gospel readings are taken primarily from Matthew's Gospel. In year B, they're taken primarily from Mark's Gospel, and in year C, primarily from Luke's Gospel. These three, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, are sometimes called the Synoptic Gospels, meaning with one eye, as they so closely resemble and overlap in many places. John's Gospel is quite different. It's believed to be the last one written and is the most highly developed theologically. John's Gospel is interspersed throughout the A, B, and C year cycle, especially in Lent and Easter time. And for five weeks of the year B, from the 17th to the 21st Sunday, we have the Bread of Life discourse from John chapter 6, where Jesus says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. You may know that we are now in year B, as, as of this past Advent, so our Gospel passages for this year are mostly from the Gospel of Mark. Mark is believed to be the first one to write a gospel account, probably around the year 60 to 65 AD. Dr. Mary Healy, a script professor at Sacred Heart Major Seminary in Detroit, describes Mark's gospel beautifully in the following passage. She writes, when Mark wrote his gospel, to become a follower of Jesus was a radical decision. It could mean incurring disapproval or outright rejection from friends and family. It could entail close fellowship with people one would have previously shunned, the wealthy with the poor, the devout with the formerly decadent, Jewish nationalists with Roman soldiers. For the educated, it could mean enduring the ridicule of former colleagues, for the absurdity of following a carpenter from a backwater village who had suffered the most ignominious form of capital punishment. And for many, Christian faith would result in imprisonment, torture, and death in the brutality of the Roman arena. Yet as one reads Mark's work, one is impressed with its overflowing joy. Mark is fairly, fairly bursting with the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, crucified and risen from the dead. For Mark, the life and times of Jesus is no mere edifying story. It is an event that has changed the course of world history, that has, in fact, brought history to its culmination. It is what makes sense of and brings to completion all that God did for his people Israel and foretold in their scriptures. It is good news that has dramatically changed Mark's life. Mark writes in such a way as to invite his readers to embark on the same adventure that he himself and Jesus' first disciples have engaged in, the adventure of encountering Jesus, growing in the knowledge of who he truly is and committing one's whole life to him. It is nearly impossible to read Mark as a neutral bystander. At every turn, he invites his readers to see themselves reflected in the disciples, in the crowds that followed, that flocked to Jesus for healing, or in the other characters in the story. Like the characters in Mark's gospel, 
readers are challenged to respond to the provocative words and, out and astounding deeds of the carpenter from Nazareth. Who then is this? The disciples ask after Jesus calms the storm on the sea. It is the question at the heart of Mark's gospel. Jesus himself raises this question when he asks his disciples, but who do you say that I am? Mark has already provided the answer at the beginning of his work. Jesus is the Messiah, the beloved Son of God. But it is not enough merely to understand the words. The point is to allow their full reality to come to light through a personal encounter with Jesus. Mark's gospel is written to enable his readers to do just that. Very beautifully put by Dr. Mary Healy. A great exercise to do if we have a bit of time, which many of us do during this pandemic, is to take the time and read the Gospel of Mark all in one sitting for an overview of the whole passage. And later we can reflect bit by bit or taking perhaps a few paragraphs or a chapter at a time. But great to see the whole picture of Mark's story of Jesus. In today's Gospel, we, heard, we see a passage from the first chapter of Mark's Gospel. And the first words recorded by Mark can summarize the message. Mark writes, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. And we see a dramatic example of repentance and conversion in today's first reading, as the people of Nineveh repent at the message of Jonah. We are told they believed God, proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth. In today's gospel, we also hear of Jesus calling his disciples, come follow me. And we are told that on hearing that, Simon and Andrew immediately left their nets and followed him. James and John left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. A small but interesting detail in so many of the gospel accounts of Jesus' encounters with people is how often we are told they left something behind, the nets or their father Zebedee in today's gospel passage, but also the blind man who throws off his cloak when Jesus calls him, and the Samaritan woman at the well who leaves her water jar behind after encountering Jesus. Often the call of God in our lives invites us to leave something behind as well. Maybe it's a sinful habit or an attachment to money or positions or power. A good question for each of us to reflect upon, myself included, is what is the Lord calling me to let go of or leave behind in my life? as he invites me to follow him or follow him even more closely today. As we continue with this celebration of Eucharist on this third Sunday of Ordinary Time and the Word of God Sunday, let us thank God for speaking through the scriptures, not only to people long ago, but to us today. As we enter into this year of reflecting on the good news through the eyes of St. Mark, may we encounter and come to know Jesus ever more deeply and grow daily in our love and trust in him. The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Please stand as we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And let us now turn to God with our prayers of petition. Let's pray for the Church throughout the world, for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for his health and for his intentions, for all of our leaders in the Church, and for all the people of God. 
We pray to the Lord. Lord. As we celebrate this Word of God Sunday, we pray for a deeper knowledge and love of the Lord through his gift to us of the sacred scriptures. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we conclude as well our week of prayer for Christian unity, we pray for a greater unity among all Christians. That, uh, as Jesus prayed, that we may all be one. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Pray for all of our members of government and our world leaders for God's help, wisdom, and guidance in all their decisions and actions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those suffering from the COVID virus in any way, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the members of our parish communities of the Kent Lambton Roman Catholic Family of Parishes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. All the staff and students of our schools, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in our RCIA and all those considering joining our Catholic faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick, for all those who are suffering, especially for those who are dying, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who have died, they may enjoy eternal peace in Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. It's now possible but in silence to bring our own prayers and needs before God. Lord God, in faith and in trust, we bring these prayers and all of our needs before you. We ask you to hear these and to grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands in praise and glory of his name for our good and glorious church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Ronald Peter, our Bishop, Joseph, his auxiliary, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer one another the sign of peace. peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Then only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life 
and may always glory in your gift, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's go in the peace of Christ to love and serve the Lord. Have a great week. These are the days of Elijah Declaring the word of the Lord And these are the days of your servant Moses Righteousness being restored And though these are days of great trial I found